To sell or not to sell, a question many artists have faced regarding their music catalogs. It's the flip side of the crusade big name artists like Taylor Swift are on to re-record their songs in order to have full ownership of them. Instead, some musicians are looking at the financial pros and cons of selling their catalogs and putting their music in the hands of a team who will manage their legacy for years to come. Our Phil Lipoff spoke with industry legends about why some artists are buying into the trend. For almost 50 years, Air Supply has been putting out anthemic love songs with soaring lyrics and bold vocals. Graham Russell and Russell Hitchcock have arguably cornered the market on the big 80s love ballad. Case in point, Lost in Love. Lost in love I don't know much. Making love out of nothing at all. Out of nothing at all. And all out of love. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without you. Those songs and so many others striking a chord generation after generation. You can see the first 10 rows and they're in tears mm -hmm. and they're crying or they're laughing. And you can see that it's so intense and they're like following and singing every word. And to us, that's a great responsibility. Like Air Supply, the late Whitney Houston's legacy lives on through her music. Born in New Jersey, known worldwide, Houston's powerful once in a generation voice churning out hit after hit from dance tracks to beautiful ballads for almost three decades. Greatest love of all. Because of greatest love of all. I want to dance with somebody. And of course, and I... but 11 years after her death, it's up to Pat Houston to preserve Whitney's legacy. I honor and respect the position that I'm in as a flame keeper for her legacy. Pat is Whitney's sister-in-law and former manager, and now the executor of her estate. Her talent was such a wonderment, and the fact that they're still listening to her music and still interested in her brand, it's very powerful. Whitney's estate and Air Supply have more than just huge hits in common. Neither fully owns their music catalogs anymore. And they're not alone. A collection of major artists have gone on to sell all or part of their catalogs, an especially popular trend over the last several years. Artists, creators, owners of the copyrights can slice and dice these catalogs in a million different ways. Sometimes they'll just sell the publishing, sometimes they'll just sell the recorded music rights. Bruce Springsteen reportedly sold his catalog to Sony for more than half a billion dollars. Other legends have sold all or part of their catalogs as well, like Bob Dylan, Neil Young, Stevie Nicks, and David Bowie. And more modern artists like Justin Timberlake and John Legend. Even Justin Bieber, at just 28 years old, reportedly sold his catalog for a staggering $200 million. Music catalogs are a very complicated asset. The value changes all the time, it fluctuates. So why do it? For more seasoned artists, it can help with estate planning. They don't have to worry about what their heirs are going to do with this very complicated asset of a song catalog. But then there's Taylor Swift. I remember Famously re-recording her entire catalog to maintain rights over her work after the recordings of her first six albums were sold without her consent. I think that artists deserve to own their work. I just feel very passionately about that. She's sort of the rising tide that lifts all boats because, yes, all of this was in her self-interest, but she has educated countless musicians and countless fans about the value of owning your own creative work. Still, the thinking that an artist is selling out by selling their work seems to be coming to an end. Bob Dylan sold his catalog. If those songs aren't sacred, you know, as, as much as you can say that about a popular song, what is? So then, who's buying these catalogs and what are they doing with them? 2006, yeah. that Kurt Cobain deal was huge. It was. Larry Mestel is the founder and CEO of Primary Wave. The publishing and management company owns a percentage of Air Supply and Whitney Houston's catalogs, as well as Stevie Nicks, Prince, Bob Marley, James Brown, Def Leppard, and Kurt Cobain, just to name a few. So why, in 2006, did you decide to start on this path in the music industry. 
a lot of these legendary and iconic artists, which is what we specialize in, uh, were, were not being focused on by their major labels. Primary Wave rarely ever buys 100% of an artist's catalog, and that's because Larry wants to create and build partnerships. We do not create, we do not market without an artist's approval. You, know, you could see some of the things we've done for Whitney, uh, for Bob Marley, Alice Cooper. The walls of Primary Wave proudly list the company's artists and the projects they've collaborated on. When Larry's talking about these relationships he creates with the artists, these partnerships, sometimes it's to build on the reputation, build on the brand. For instance, Whitney Houston, a line of MAC cosmetics, her own perfume. The Houston estate and Primary Wave began working together in 2019. We've done a biographical film. We have a new gospel album. We have a Broadway show in development. It has to feel right. And I would not do anything that I didn't think she would be proud of. One of the first meetings with Houston's estate and Primary Wave involved going through her old recordings. We found a track deep in the vault called Higher Love. And one of my creatives got Kygo very quickly to remix the record. Bring me a higher love. It was very energetic. And we just felt that it would make a, a major run, and it did. The result, a chart-topping song seven years after Houston's death, reintroducing a new generation to her incredible talent. Her brand, unfortunately, was tarnished by a lot of issues. And so we said, look, we have to bring the conversation back to music. Air Supply has also embraced the partnership, including this AAA ad. I'm all out of love for my old insurance. But it did take some time for them to feel comfortable with it. At first, we said, no, we don't want to do that. Songwriters and recording artists should own their own catalog and their own songs. But we started to think about it, and it started to make sense. Often, selling the catalog is a matter of timing. For Primary Wave, it will take years of success for Larry to consider an acquisition. We're not interested uh, in brand new acts where the income streams are just coming down, and you just can't outmarket the decline. But sometimes, those songs can unexpectedly sell themselves. Like when Dreams by Fleetwood Mac suddenly became a TikTok sensation, sending the song back to the top of the charts in 2020. Did you have any hand in the skateboard Listen, guy? Can, can I tell you, I'm going to say this often, right? Better to be lucky than good. Moments like that are unexpected, and for artists, it can be a gamble to sell their catalogs. In the event, they become even more valuable over time. If the air starts to come out of the catalog market, people will think, OK, I sold at a really good time. Conversely, if things continue to heat up, they'll be like, oh, damn, I should have waited. Whether the artist sells their catalog or re-records it. Bottom line is it's, you know, it's, it all ends up with the person that writes the songs. Do you want to do it or you don't? With Air Supply, that's Graham. And he says it was time for those hands to let go. I think people will listen to some, some of our music for a lot longer after we, after we die. You know, I really do. But this will make it even longer, I think. The songs will always be mine because they're my babies. But why not uh, let them go out into the universe and... Uh, let them spread their wings. And spread their wings <laughs> and fly. You know what I mean? Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.